Chernobyl has been in the news once again of late, and not for any good reasons. The damaged and polluted nuclear power station was overrun by advancing Russian forces during Putin's invasion of Ukraine, creating enormous disquiet and unease concerning the plant's management and the risk it still poses to the health of Europe. I remember the Chernobyl incident very well. And I remember the reports of radioactive fallout reaching Britain during a bank holiday weekend, when toxic, heavy rainfall affected many parts of the UK. It was an unsettling time, and it's unsettling again to see the Chernobyl exclusion zone under violent new management. But interestingly, as well as Russian T-72 tanks overrunning the site today, there are other armoured vehicles among the ruined buildings at Chernobyl. A handful of World War II era vehicles remain untouched even today, too contaminated by radiation to be safely removed. So why are Soviet armored vehicles at Chernobyl, and what role did they play in the containment of the nuclear disaster? The disaster occurred on the 26th of April 1986 at the Number Four reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant close to the city of Pripyat, the north of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. During a safety test on the reactor, the power output dropped unexpectedly to near zero. The operators couldn't reset the power to safe levels, and the reactor became unstable. Due to the operational instructions not being explicit enough, the operators proceeded with the test, and on completion, the operators triggered a reactor shutdown. But due to human error and design flaws, the reactor turned into a bomb, and an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction began. The core melted, and subsequent explosions blew the roof off the building. For nine days, the fire raged, releasing huge amounts of radioactive contamination over the Soviet Union and Western Europe. Eventually, the Soviet authorities placed a 1,000 square mile exclusion zone around the station, evacuating permanently hundreds of thousands of people. Thousands of people, however, would die from radiation-related deaths over the years that followed the disaster. In December 1986, the reactor was covered by a protective sarcophagus to reduce the spread of radioactivity. Until this was improved with a new confinement building over the reactor in 2017. Today, the site is by no means safe, and the recent fighting and occupation by Russian forces has jolted the world awake regarding the still potent danger the destroyed reactor poses to human health and the environment. The important point today is the power supply to the plant, which was apparently interrupted by the Russians during their advance. Cooling is vital, and the only backup system to keep the stored nuclear waste from the 1986 disaster cool is based on diesel generators. An increase in radioactivity in the area was noted during the Russian assault, explained by the increase in vehicular traffic at the site churning up radioactive dust. So what about the old World War II era vehicles at Chernobyl? Why were they brought in to attack the Number Four reactor? That's right, you heard correctly. In 1986, the Soviets planned to use World War II era ISU-152 heavy assault guns designed to kill German Tiger tanks to blast holes in the reactor's outer wall. Why? Because below the burning reactor was a basement area intended to trap small amounts of steam and bubble it through another floor containing a bubbling pool. As firefighters struggled to try and control the blaze, water filled both pools, creating the possibility of a steam explosion. Also, molten uranium fuel could burn down through the bottom of the reactor, through the pools, and enter the groundwater table. The ISU-152s would use their enormous guns to blast a hole in the base of the reactor, through which a pipe could be inserted and liquid nitrogen pumped inside to cool everything down, freezing the pools. Normally, workers would have manually cut the hole through the concrete wall, but radiation levels made this suicidal. Instead, an ISU-152's heavy frontal armor could act as a radiation shield. And from a distance, it could fire anti-masonry shells at the wall. 
Test firings against a similar wall revealed that a single shell made a hole that was too small for the pipe, and multiple hits caused the wall to collapse, which could not be allowed to happen at the reactor. Eventually, the heavy assault gun plan was abandoned, in favour of miners digging a tunnel underneath the reactor. However, the ISU-152s would still play an important role in the operations at Chernobyl. Between 7 and 11 ISU-152s were driven on tank transporters the 390 road miles from their barracks home to the 22nd Guards and Red Banner Tank Division, a reserve unit. Due to being a reserve unit operating the T-62 main battle tank in 1986, it had a lot of World War II era armour on strength. The ISU-152 was chosen also because of its extremely thick armour, which it was believed would partially shield the operators from radiation. Instead of blowing holes in the reactor wall, the ISU-152s were to be used as demolition vehicles, their drivers and crews becoming known as liquidators. The Soviets decided to flatten all the buildings they could at the site to remove radioactive wood. The Soviets realized that radioactivity in wood remains captive until disturbed. If burned, the radioactivity becomes mobile again in the smoke and ash generated and can be blown for many miles by the wind. Knocking down buildings, all of which would contain a certain amount of wood, could reduce the risk of further airborne contamination if people started fires at the site, as firefighting would be limited due to the exclusion order around the site. Many people entered the exclusion zone, looting buildings and even vehicles, heedless or perhaps ignorant of the radiation levels. The ISU-152's mass was sufficient for use as a bulldozer, and between June and November 1986, these huge tank destroyers knocked down dozens of buildings around Chernobyl and in Pripyat. The debris from the demolitions was pushed by bulldozers into trenches and buried. Some of the fire engines that attended the initial incident were so radioactive that they too were buried in trenches, along with many civilian vehicles from the area. Once the task was completed, the ISU-152s, themselves completely irradiated, were likewise abandoned at the site. Since Ukraine's independence in 1991, some of the abandoned vehicles have been partially stripped by trophy hunters, these parts all being highly radioactive. Several World War II-era ISU-152s remain dumped around the Chernobyl site. The most well-known is number 100, which sits beside a concrete wall northeast of the power plant. It probably was abandoned in 1986 due to mechanical failure. It still registers very high levels of radiation. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.